Oh, what's up gamers? Brian and I are taking this week off, so we wanted to give you a little treat straight from our Patreon. Over the past couple of months, we started watching The Sopranos with our dear sweet friend Jory Griffiths. We've been having a great time doing those. We'll talk for a little bit at the beginning, and then we obnoxiously talk through the entire episode, and then we have a little discussion at the end. So, what you'll hear today is the beginning and the end of the first episode of Gabagool School with me, Brian, and Jory. And even if you don't watch The Sopranos or you don't care about it, I really recommend these because they're like my favorite thing that we do on the Patreon, and it's mostly just us hanging out and talking about TV shows that aren't The Sopranos. But if you want to watch along with the actual episode and hear our commentary track as well as the beginning of the end and three more episodes of The Sopranos slash Gabagool School, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash late night, where you can also find our weekly mini-sodes, full-length video episodes. We play New York Times crosswords. We've played Civ. I make stuff in Blender. There's just an embarrassment of content. Anyway, really hope you enjoy this episode of Gabagool School and that you enjoy Jory as much as we do and that you're staying hydrated. See you next week. Pamela, can you please shut the door? Fellas, did somebody wake up this morning and get some Gabagool? <laughs> oh, I got myself a, a weapon of a certain sort and I invite you to guess what type. Well, uh, I, I grew up. With Gabagool, of course, being from New Jersey. So, Wait. also, I want to wait. I want to welcome everybody to the first ever late night NFT, uh, <laughs> exclusively available as an NFT for everyone who wants to purchase it. Uh, of course, everyone knows I'm a big crypto guy, really into the blockchain, and uh, yeah. So, uh, give give me that give me that Ethereum. Okay, uh, Leighton, can we have a sidebar about this? Sure thing. He can't. Are you, he can't hear us. What's are, up? Are you looking for a new co-host? Actually, yeah. How do you know? Uh, I just figured there was a backstory here, and you might want to talk about it and get that worked out as quickly as possible. Jory, the the you know, Leighton Knight had funds. Those funds are no longer. Um... <laughs> Those funds are all bored apes now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to actually. We we purchased a sick new PFP on Twitter. It's all. It's got six sides. And, uh, <laughs> it's super dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's worth it just to stand out that's right because who doesn't want to be seen as a consummate tool immediately <laughs> uh, also we bought a place in the blockchain hills on crypto island uh, oh my which is goodness did you watch that new vacation. did you watch that film brian i did it's, i watched it in its entirety i was so was, delighted by it wait it what, what unimaginable what are, you, what are you guys talking about oh jory please explain this so um, a, a several people who I'm sure are lovely in various ways, but who seem to have some amount of uh, crypto wealth that is a very kind of like nouveau riche weird thing that is burning a hole in their pocket, have decided to buy an island and make it like, the first. It's in like Fiji or, or, or thereabouts, right? Yeah. And it seems like their goal is to create a sovereign nation that's entirely run by crypto dorks. Yeah. Um, and to help advertise it, they it's, made... It's called Douche Begonia. <laughs> uh, they, they made a... Uh, not to be cruel, but the word I will use be is cruel. humiliating uh, animated <laughs> film. Read them, Jory. Read them. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun sort of a take where one of the people involved is like a cartoonist who's very excited about kind of obviously wants to be an animator and probably crypto was like a secondary dream that he's fallen back on. But there's a, there's a genie esque character, like clearly just based on the Robin Williams genie, but who is just a walking, talking like crypto coin who talks our <laughs> every man protagonist yeah through crypto land and tells him all about it. And there's even a like meet cute with a manic pixie crypto girl. Uh, it's bananas. It's this really is a real, arduous. is this yeah. a feature film? No, 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 it's only like 30 it's like, minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh. it, but, which is still far too long. It's extremely oh. long. And yeah, it, it it's, 
it is worth watching if only for the why the fuck did anybody think this was a good idea it's, i'm gonna say no thank you uh, <laughs> i think it also it's, has been uh washed from the internet so we'll see yeah. if I, it's possible I to just, watch I look forward to living in a place with fellow crypto enthusiasts where we can just like socialize and talk about our investments and, and, and just be cool together. You know, I like being cool. It is going to be really cool. Yeah. It's going to be so cool. I love the thing now where I will see like a word thrown around in passing or like somebody makes a passing joke and I'm like, huh, I wonder what that is. And then I don't really think about it. And then somebody finally explains it. And it just it feels like I've died. Like a and bomb gone to went hell. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, as much as everybody's here for our crypto investment advice, uh, I do think <laughs> we need to uh, take a take a ninety degree turn here for what we're really here for, which is to watch together the first episode of The Sopranos. So that's correct. Uh, uh, I have never seen this show before. I have grown up with uh, you know many of the environments within it. My parents were big fans, but I've never watched a single episode, so I'm excited to to dig in. Now, okay. let's see. W- what are your guys' backgrounds with this show? Leighton, you've seen every episode 10 times. I wish. I, I As discussed many times, I'm, I'm somewhere up there, like upper season six, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm dreading the end, so I'm really uh Oh, you haven't finished it, it yet? I have not. Oh, I thought you'd done a complete viewing i see no i got through most of season six and then i finally red pilled vernon into watching the sopranos and Mm. then our mutual watch is up to maybe a couple of episodes before the point that i dropped off so we're getting real close to uncharted territory um but i just desperately needed like an emotional support animal for the last Mm. leg of season six Mm. but mom's from jersey mom huge into sopranos um and remember so clearly the day that the finale aired and just how mad she was. So I'm, I'm excited. Aww. Well, Leighton, I assume you're completely unspoiled on the events of the finale, so I won't say anything, but let me just say, <laughs> don't adjust your set. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- that's the thing is I feel like people have been fucking talking about this thing for, I mean, it's it's getting on 20 years now or something, right? Yeah. When, when was the finale? It was 2004. Is that right? Seven, I think. Seven. Okay. So, okay. 15 years. Um, I've heard so much about it and seen it analyzed to death. I know what the final scene is and what happens, but what that looks like in the context of the show. I'm very curious about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I haven't watched any of it. Like, I think the last thing I ever watched of it asterisk on that, which I will expand upon shortly. Uh, the last thing I watched of the show was the finale when it came out on DVD because I was working at a video store at the time. Mm Uh, so I have not seen, really too much more than a few like select scenes I've looked up on YouTube of this show in 15 years. So I didn't do the big wow. revisit everyone else has been doing during COVID. Uh, so yeah. if this is the context in which cool we're doing it, what a delight. No, that's not it at all. I've been too busy I... not watching anything. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited to see this. You know, I'm excited to anything that's New Jersey. I'm interested in seeing. So uh, and this is, I feel like this is the, uh, next to the oeuvre of Kevin Smith, the iconic ha. New Jersey uh, thing. Yeah, I, I put Jersey Girl above The Sopranos, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough, of course. Everyone's yeah. favorite movie, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, two, two, two words of business I wanted to hit before yes, we start the, yes. the show. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, uh, in my previous appearance on the podcast i uh is this a main feed episode or is this uh going up on the old pate uh it's at least originally for the patreon maybe you know we'll we'll talk about whether it shows up on the main feed later but let's let's finish this and see how it is (laughs) and and we'll decide if this if this doesn't end up going to the main feed please uh i hope you bring up on the main feed that um i in that previous episode had made a joke about the uh, infamously canceled TV series Luck, 
uh, mm-hmm. where, wherein I believe I said something to the effect of uh, David Chase was out of luck or something like that. Uh, luck was actually uh, created and showrun by David Milch, the ah, creator yes. of Deadwood, Deadwood and the co-creator of NYPD Blue. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. I, I don't know if I'd characterize what I'm doing right now as an apology because I don't know if anyone was actually hurt by this mistake. Maybe I would call it a, a mea culpa. Uh, no, I apologize. It is an apology. I'm sorry if well, anyone we're, was hurt. We're still, every day we get 10 new emails about this very error. So I, I'm doing my best to sift through them, but we, we will acknowledge it uh, on yeah. the main feed just for you. Thank you. Jory, this is this 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 is pretty embarrassing for you. Yeah. <sighs> well, I appreciate you, you that really you, I appreciate that the both of you great. insulated me from this feedback completely until it would be recorded for posterity. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> very thoughtful of both of you. And, and it was so operate. egregious that even though Leighton and I independently both listened to that episode for editing, uh, we never caught it. So. <laughs> um, I also wanted to say that in preparation for this record, I did watch uh, The Many Saints of Newark today, which I finished. I, I like how I just pronounce Newark as poorly and weirdly Newark. as possible. <laughs> well, do, do you know how we say that in, in North Jersey? Please do. Uh, Leighton, do you know how we say that word in North Jersey? How do you say that word in North Well, Jersey? I want to hear how you would say it first. No. No, come on. I'm not going to. No work, Brian. No. It's, it's Nurk. 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 Well, and I'm not, I'm not kidding. That is how you say that town in New Jersey. You don't say Newark. You say Nurk. Right. I, I grew up next to Nurk. Like how, uh, wait, which one am I thinking of? There's one in Virginia. Uh, never mind. I can't think of anything funny to say, so. Please edit this out. Right. Um, that, but, uh, that, 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 that's the poll quote. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've heard a lot of very damning things about that movie, and I thought it was merely uninteresting. I didn't think mm-hmm. it was terrible, but I thought it was not particularly compelling and has no reason to exist. And it seems like David Chase didn't really care to make it and did so for the money, which I respect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, well, it, it was, I mean, it, it basically it was like Lil Sopranos, right? Or Soprano Babies, where it's all puppets <laughs> and there's a nanny and, you know, they're real cute, right? Well, it's, it's live action uh, in oh. that one sequence in The Great Muppet Caper where you see the Sopranos babies show up in like a home movie. Yeah. Uh, now, but... now, Jory, not to be this guy, I believe you're referring to the Muppets Take Manhattan. Is it Manhattan where that happens? It is. All right, I have to make another mea culpa. Well, you don't, because I just fucking called you out on it right <laughs> Two now. Two strikes. <laughs> you better, you better toe the line for the rest of this record, Jory. All right, we got, um, a, we got I... another three hours for me to try to avoid slipping <laughs> up. Uh, I'm very excited to see. Like, I, I'm expecting to see places I know in this like what explicit is places i know uh so i i think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna all watch it real time now we may cut this part out if we have literally nothing to say during the episode but at least for right now i'm gonna like everyone uh cue cue up the pilot uh on your uh uh streamologies i have mine ready to go right here the sopranos sopranos or sopranos I'm, I would usually say Sopranos, but there's no way they say that, right? They must say Sopranos. Uh, they mostly say um, Sopranos, I think. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. It took me on, on before we get into this, to, to respond to your many, many saints of Newark, it took me until literally the other day when I was doing a Civ Six Empire where I was naming out every city after Sopranos characters. Ha! Uh, to realize why the many saints of Newark is called the many saints of Newark. <laughs> Considering how long that movie's been out, it's just like, why the fuck would they call it that? And then me sitting down being like, all right, this town is named Multisant. Oh. <laughs> and the way that they try to incorporate that theme into the <laughs> film uh, is fucking crazy. There's like <laughs> multiple scenes in it where I, I do think like, you know, that prestige TV moment, you know, we weren't, and this is very much more in like that Mad Men type of more, more or less grounded realism type of thing than the like 
kind of boffo, breaking bad, silly, elevated reality feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, The show is so grounded and tends to be really quite elegant in the way they deploy a lot of their themes. And in The Many Saints of Newark, they just say shit. They just say exactly. I I don't mean to spoil anything, but there is a moment where a character uh, comes up to Dickie Moltisanti and kisses him on the face and says, "You're a saint." It's <laughs> it's really wild. Well, in fact, you're more than one. Uh, yeah, you're one of multiple saints that I know here in Newark. <laughs> um. All right. Are you guys ready <gasps> to go here? I think I am. I am trying to figure out how the timeline works on HBO Max. Uh, this is great oh, podcasting. Yeah. That, I like HBO Max. The interface is kind of a disaster. Yeah. It's it's the, the thing that I go on and click past a bunch of Harry Potter things so that I can watch The Sopranos. Oh. There we go. We did it. Next episode, my ass. All right. Um, hidden pause. All right. Oh, we got to wait for the after credit scene. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When Nick Fury shows up. I was trying to think of a way to make that bit work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, people. Well, I I enjoyed that. That was great. Um, yeah. I'm assuming like all shows, it gets better. Uh, I mean, all well-known shows, it gets better as it goes on. But that's also, like, I'm enjoying this. I'm, uh, I'm glad we're doing this. That's dope. Uh, sure. Jory, what are your thoughts? See you later, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I think that is a really interesting and really good pilot. I, this, that episode strangely doesn't, um, it feels like a very old school pilot in the way that it sets up character and theme, but not plot. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a, a modern pilot now always ends on like a big fucking cliffhanger of some kind. Right. Oh, that's an and interesting like, point. Yeah. 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 Like there's, there's, there's like any of the characters who are like the bigger senses of like sources of like conflict aside from like one that I can think of. That's a big one in season one. It's like, yeah, it's like, there's not really a whole lot of conflict in this episode. It's just all, uh, here's Dr. Melfi. Tony doesn't <laughs> like this really good though and very um i know the show in general it's like something that rules so much about the sopranos is that it's like a great comedy it's Mm -hmm. great comic performances and really funny jokes uh but like that episode is like more or less pure comedy am i wrong am i off base there in how i felt about watching it it's well i well i think maybe speaking to your point about it not really introducing the points of conflict is that when when you don't really know what the like main sources of conflict of the show or season are there's more room for it to be more of the comedy but to be fair though it's like a really cartoony episode within the context of the show yeah like, which there... also just how it's shot like we were talking about with those kind of with those extreme close-ups all the time it it, it feels broad Right. Right. Yeah. I was, I was trying to put a finger on it. It's like, are those, are those like weird close-ups? Like, are they Tim Burton-y? I can't figure out. (laughs) A a little bit. Like Like I can definitely. It feels kind of Pee-wee's adventure. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And the, I mean, just doing the Jersey Italian thing, which is not super exaggerated by the way, but just as soon as you (laughs) see anyone who talks like that, they kind of read like a cartoon character, right? Yeah. I, I think so. I think mainly what I come around on on this uh, thing about when it, the first time that I watched it, because this is maybe like my fourth time seeing it. Um, it's such a great pilot for the show, but it's not. It, it's like, OK, I love this, but it doesn't give you the full sense of how good the show is, you know, like, yeah, it, it becomes not a much different thing, but like the how quickly it figures itself out after the pilot like i think it comes together like real quick yeah Yeah, like many of these large ensemble hbo shows just having watched that once i don't know who anyone is i like well it's great because there are multiple people who you're not going to see again because they got recast or people (laughs) that you saw in the background who are actually main characters now so yeah 
Yeah. Doesn't help that there are two pussies. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, it, it's a it's a compelling pilot. I mean, mostly due to uh, uh, Gandolfini and Melfi is Bracco. Is that that's who that mm-hmm. is? Lorenzo? Yeah. Yeah. Those two. I mean, that's the anchor, right? Uh, I presume of much of the show. And well, the two of them together is great. It's interesting how the show kind of like weaves in and out of therapy. I don't think that's a spoiler. Um, right. There, there, there are periods of the show where it's heavier and then some where it's like, we haven't seen Dr. Melfi in a while. Yeah. I, I feel like when I say this, I'm either channeling something I heard somebody say, or I am just making this up completely and I'm wrong, but the pilot feels kind of like they meant, it feels like the show was written with the hook. A mafia capo goes to therapy. Like it feels like that that is the show in this episode. And that is not what the show turns out to be. That is, I feel like that's exactly how it was pitched. Yeah. Yeah. But also that is the pitch that got me into the show. Cause I knew that the Sopranos was like a mob show that everybody loved, but I didn't know that it was about mob guy has panic attacks and goes to therapy and sees hot milk therapist. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. Is, is that a thing? Dr. What? Dr. Dr. Milfi? Yeah. I didn't want to say it. Did you hear me pause? (laughs) No, it is for me. (laughs) Um, Well, this is crazy. Analyze This and The Sopranos came out the same year. Wait, why are you so hung up on Analyze This? Because it's the mob guy goes to therapy thing, right? So was this a pitch that bifurcated and someone's like, we're going to do the drama version of this. We're going to do the straight comedy version of this. You know, it's just interesting. No, I'm sure they weren't. But, you know, sometimes things are in the zeitgeist or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, so it is, it's very interesting. And this is something I did not pick up uh, at the time that these two mob boss goes to therapy things happened at pretty much the same exact time. That's, yeah, that's exact same moment. That weird. is really interesting. Yeah. Like, maybe, and, maybe once in on this discussion. <laughs> I mean, get, to to be fair, maybe it's just because I've seen too much De Niro doing this kind of stuff. But uh, Gandolfini is a little De Niro-y, right? A little bit. Yeah, uh, I in I, this I, pilot. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, he, that's a really good way of putting it. I think, Leighton. That yeah, I think he he pivots away from some of. There's there's something that feels a little bit more sticky about the character in this episode than where he goes, especially because in general, uh, it's a very, very pat feeling thing to say. But like the show does get significantly darker. Uh, yeah. So I, and just, I, think I, becomes... I mean, and, and also like that's the bit of the show, right? Like in doing this like second watch of it again, not spoiling anything. It's just like. Seasons one and two are like, oh, this is just good vibes. Like bad shit's happening, but like we're all we're out we're all having a good time. Season six is just like butthole clench, like, oh my god, Jesus fuck. Yeah. That is kind of like it seems like a lot of prestige shows, or at least like this kind of moment. This I feel like Sopranos is arguably the first, but like this moment where these shows are kind of being conceived with refillable premises and then a few Mm -hmm. seasons in they've more or less changed their mind and they've seen which way the tide is turning in terms of tv and again like i think chase is the guy there but like i think mad men did the same thing where like after season three they completely blow up the status quo the show yeah they like i mean Mm -hmm. they go to california for a while and Uh, it's like uh i forget when don draper becomes a partner but it's somewhere around there, right? Yeah, it's like I think starting yeah. with season four, they're at uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sterling Cooper Draper Price. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, and I, I think that um, I think that this show, this episode feels like it's setting up an ensemble cast, yes. as as Brian observed, and I think that that's true, but it's so not the way I think about the show. Am I yeah. off base there? No, <clears throat> I think you're totally right, right? <coughs> It's, uh, I'm not sure how to articulate any of it without being, uh, spoilery. So it's tough. I know I, I have so much I want to say. Multiple of the most absolutely insane things about Many Saints of Newark are 
spoilers for yeah. the show. I, I, <laughs> oh, I, I, so, I, I so, talk about it. Yeah, Jory, I so desperately want to talk to you about it because I didn't <laughs> think you were going to see it and I haven't seen it. Um, and I really want to hear about it. Also, does it, because I, I always have a hard time remembering exactly what the Christopher Tony relationship is. And the only way I was able to remember it was that it's Carmela's cousin. But is that true? I don't think it is. Okay. Uh, and I, I did not I, remember there. Cause I, I think the, sh- the show is inconsistent about it in the first couple of episodes. If I, okay. Oh, really? Correctly. Like they, they, the show itself, like doesn't change their minds. Like, well, yeah. Nice. Well, I mean also in this episode, like Silvio's kind of like, not really one of the guys, like he's kind of ancillary and not, you know, part of their main group. Like they reference, you know, Oh, that guy that you knew in high school. And it's like later, it's like, no, you guys all knew each other. This was the thing. Yeah. Um, no. And I, um, I think that after thinking about it while we were watching the show, um, when I was confused about who big pussy was, I had seen big pussy in my periff in that opening scene and thought that it was Bobby. <laughs> And you're ah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see Bobby until later. Yeah. yeah. I like completely forgot about that. Well, the uh, show yeah, is also it, really great about like there are characters who were kind of like g- guys smoking in the corner for like four seasons. And then in seasons five and six, it's like you get an arc and you get an arc and you wow. get an arc. Wow. Yeah. Once they have room to really expand, it's like instead of running, running out of running out of stories for the main people. Be pretty typical, like it's mostly know, like let's let's just stuff. spread the suffering around a little bit. Like mm-hmm. let's let's make sure everybody gets some of this. Yeah, I I wonder if maybe the I am very curious. Like I think episode two is going to be really fascinating to watch for me and seeing that the seeing how gradually the direction changes because mm-hmm. this does feel like the pilot for. And don't get me wrong, I think, again, Sopranos is a very funny show, but uh, it's not a comedy. And uh, this this episode is like more or less all comedy. It's like even even the Czech dude getting killed wasn't really played as a big, serious, dramatic moment. Uh, Yeah, it really wasn't. And then as we get into these next couple of episodes, it's like, uh uh-huh, okay. Like, that's the thing that this show, I feel like, does so well. And I mean, it it really set the tone for a lot of prestige things of walking that line of really tightly written and acted comedy and then just, like, Mm -hmm. devastating shit. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. A lot. So many little, like jokes and plot lines and all sorts of bullshit that come up later that are like real subtle in this episode and some not very subtle but like all those things are like laid really nicely it's really elegant and yeah i think i think a lot of these shows too around the same time like um it's like i would say that this is sort of the opposite of the um the uh bless everyone involved bless the show i loved it and still love it with all my heart but like the the lost mystery box kind mm-hmm. of being like we're going to put in a ton of shit but all of the mystery is just a blank thing we have to fill in later and mm-hmm. i think that the generally the prestige model that has come out uh since then and which i think was you know brewing in other shows mostly on premium cable around the same time where they build up a world and as they write, they find what interests them the most and build off of that Mm -hmm. as opposed to just having to make something up from the pieces that were available and like writing checks that they just hope they can cash later on. Uh, Wouldn't wouldn't it be really tight if like at the top of the season, like Walt has like a machine gun? (laughs) (laughs) Surely well, you can. I, we'll figure that one out, right? We'll figure Adam that one out. and Jamie <laughs> tested that myth, and it was not busted, Layton. That machine <laughs> would work in the real world. I guess uh, Walter White really was the smartest guy in the world. I'm, I'm <laughs> curious how the process of pitching shows has changed from when this show was pitched to now, just in general. You know, like, did you need to have the five season arc or whatever, or even an idea of it? I, I know nothing about this world, so. I, I'm I'm curious how that whole thing has has gone. the The other thing I don't have much of a sense of uh, is, you know, as you guys were saying, this was like the birth of prestige drama for HBO uh, specifically. 
and kind of ushered HBO into what it is now. Yeah, it's like, when um, did Six Feet Under start? It was like it was a before, year or two after this. Was it after? Yeah. I don't know. It, I, you're right. I don't think it was before. So before this, HBO had these like weird comedies. Well, first of all, it, it had Larry Sanders famously before this um, uh, by a few years at least. But before that, there it was like Dream On and Arliss. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, 2001. Yeah. So two years later was six. Years. Okay. Um, and, and it's I, like, it's like anything that they actually produced with any care was just like a fill in between episodes of real sex and taxi cab confessions <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh, real sex. Uh, well, don't forget, this is airing at the same time as Mr. Show too, right? On HBO, which is, uh, that's yeah, such a fun Mr. thing to think like about. Season three or something around now? Probably two. I think, is that right? Yeah, I, I think it started exactly. in 97. Oh, yeah. It was 97 or 98. You're right. Um, but yeah, the, the, I, I'd be very interested in reading a like a chronology of the HBO original programming from, uh, you know, I guess it would be even the mid to late 80s to the present day. But at least up through the, you know, say mid 2000s. Um, I think the answers to a lot of the questions that we have posed here are things that they absolutely talk about in episode one of Talking Sopranos, which mm -hmm. I do highly recommend as a little um, aperitif for each episode. But I would totally recommend watching more of the show before you start getting it. And I'm yeah, mostly saying I... this to the audience. Um, Talking Sopranos is great, but you you want to get into it like at, as a little like bonus after you've gotten into a few seasons of like okay cool now i want to follow up because they're really thorough and they talk about like a lot of the decisions but i think it's better to like get into the show first yeah and then... okay yeah i don't want to do i mean i'm presuming most of the people listening to talking sopranos have seen the entire thing probably multiple times yeah, i assume so so that's fair, but it is also when I was watching through it for the first time, maybe around season four, I started like maybe watching an episode after I would watch it because they go through like they'll interview somebody who is on the show and then they go through the script and just like talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really fascinating. I think Michael Imperioli is just like the coolest fucking guy. Steve Sharepa, he's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny because I got the host. Uh, he's the co-host and he's a character that you won't meet for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it's funny because I got through, I had watched more of Talking Sopranos than I had gotten into that character's storyline. And this is again, this is just like inside later seasons of baseball. But I watched scenes with his character and I going into it, like mostly being familiar with Steve Sharippa from Talking Sopranos, I was like, I'm I'm almost determined not to like you, and it's like, damn it, he's <laughs> he's such a good fucking actor. <laughs> he's, he's just really annoying on the podcast he does. But that's delightful. That's not fair, Steve Sharp. I'm sorry, you're great. It's talking Sopranos is fun. It's just whatever. Yeah, expect a, an angry email from him. After we this should episode. do. Should we do a, a a late night like a talking late night show? That'd be like a post podcast kind of show about the ins and outs of the production, mm -hmm. right? I mean, uh, I don't I don't have any weekly podcasts going right now if you need somebody to host that. Oh, dude, Jory, if you were to do like your own like breakdown of every episode where you just comment on everything after it comes out, that would be probably my favorite thing ever. <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> it's like we go, be great. we go into it with the goal of it being a tight 20 minutes and then it turns into <laughs> just a rambling mess. But yeah. listen, Jory, if you're up for it, it's between you and Chris Hardwick, so. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I, had a Hardwick, I, I had a Hardwick joke uh, locked and loaded, and I was like, it would be a waste of everyone's time since it will be cut out of the episode. <laughs> so. Well, I'm sure yours was probably much better than mine. <laughs> no, I don't think it was. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> I uh, I did. Um, somebody yeah. asked on a podcast that I don't recall, so I'm stealing a bit from a podcast that I can't even give the half credit. I wish I could. Um, somebody asked a question within the last year of uh, um, when you hear that bomb. That's my bad impression of the HBO 
title you got card. It. Yep. Um, the Static Angel, I think is what it's called. And I'm not wow. yeah. Uh What do you hear right after that? For me, it's the Mr. Show theme. The pop, pop, bah, Oh, like, no, I hear bop, 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 ba da ba da ba da Yeah. Curb, curb I think that's it for, for most people, I would say. Yeah, but also, yes, I also hear Mr. Show, for sure. Uh, um, Blayton, how about you? It's It's Sopranos for me because... So before HBO Max stopped being available through Amazon, they had like the full HBO. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. They had it on Amazon Prime and they do not do it on HBO Max. And so the, the, the th- uh, series of sounds leading into the Sopranos theme song, including the little bass riff. That that's like straight up serotonin, and then all of a sudden they're like, "You can't watch this on Amazon anymore. You got to go straight to HBO Max." Do you want to look at Harry Potter people? Do you want want to not know where any of your shows are? The only thing that you come here to watch. Do you want to have to hunt for it? And then they won't oh. even do me the favor of playing that goddamn bass riff. <laughs> and instead, it's just right into it's. You know, my life is really difficult because of this. I, I don't re- I don't know if I address this on or off mic, but uh, the um, I thought I was going to activate HBO Max to watch The Matrix uh, Resurrections. And then I saw that I had an account and then I checked and I had been charged for the past like eight months. <laughs> <laughs> I, so the, the, the stratified subscription services just drive me up the fucking wall. I hate it. Uh, Sounds like I'm, a real red pill moment. I, just, <laughs> yeah, I, I have red pill now. I just texted you to a link that I was watching recently, not because of this, but because I was curious. Um, let me know if that came through. Oh, you specified only that, Jory, this is meant for you. No, no, it's for both of you. I can also put it in the chat here. If you Layton, you're welcome to watch it. History of HBO free, 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 Preacher presentation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> from... uh, Preacher was a Showtime show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the insider tip, Jory. Uh, these intros are so great. And they are very much of a time. This room. Oh rips. my God. Just hold on. Um, this is second. a box office in my home. <laughs> yeah. So this is, these are for, I don't think I said this. Uh, these are all of the HBO introduction, like graphics and music from the mid seventies, whenever it started 76 or something through, I don't know, the nineties. That um, rules. Check your RSS feed. The link will be in the description of the episode. Yes. Uh, they're so great. Sure it will. I, I love I love the graphic design on these. I love the music. It's just the best. This is so sick. The intro where it's like it starts on a family and then zooms out and then it's like going through the streets of a town that goes up into the sky to the big HBO. Oh, that that was the greatest thing in my childhood. Oh, I like I did not understand how shit was made when I was a child, which I suppose is not specific to me, Uh, but just like watching all of these and seeing that they are all hand animated right like, it is so bizarre it's all just airbrushed drawings and shit it's so yeah. wild i actually just heard do you guys ever listen to Twenty Thousand hertz the podcast no what is that mm-hmm. my friend uh it is it's a podcast about basically sounds and sound design and they i i just listened to one i don't know how recent it was uh on specifically the hbo intro music and uh, it's um, I mean, it, it talks about the design of the uh, that thing you were talking about before, as well. That as was actually uh, I'm, I'm being very serious. That was much better than my impression of it. Well, th- thank you, Joy. I'm a professional. Uh, <laughs> but it also goes through the da 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 and it, it's it's cool. It, it's worth listening to. Apparently, the guy that wrote it, and I can't remember his name, is one of these people who just hears everything in his head uh, and just dictates it. And he just like threw that down. Uh, it, it It's a cool story. That's hmm. crazy. I'm, that, I will totally listen to this. It's a great wild. podcast, actually. They, they, they just had one. I just, their latest episode is on Simlish. Really? Yes, it is. Ooh. That's so dope. Yeah, that which I didn't realize. Fun. Apparently, Simlish came around because uh, there's a famous improv game of it's called uh, uh, Gibberish Poet. You say gibberish or gibberish? I always forget. Gibberish, right? Gibberish? I say soft G. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, where someone says something in gibberish and the other person translates like it's real. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's a classic short form improv game. And apparently that was the inspiration for Simlish. They got some improv comedians in and just started and told them to <sighs> go off and just do uh, gibberish. Wow. That whips. Yeah. I um, it was it was a long enough time ago now that I don't remember enough specifics from the interview. But I read um, John Flansburg from They Might Be Giants once. Uh, there's a Simlish version of a They Might Be Giants song in like oh, The Sims fun. 3 or something. Uh-huh. And they brought both of them in to record the Simlish vocals. And I'm pretty sure that's like consistently what they do is get the actual artist to do it. Yeah, and I it's know. Like, yeah. They, they, they talk about uh, the Katy Perry one. That's her. She's mm-hmm. doing oh, it in Simlish. Yeah. That's so fucking cool. I love it. What a goofy bit. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So adorable. Um, um Speaking of goofy bits, yeah, I, I kept thinking, I serious. I'm I'm being really serious. I I don't think that reviews of Many Saints of Newark have been uncharitable. I do not think it's a good movie, but it was less poor than I thought it would be. However, it still did take me multiple stops and starts to get all the way through it today. Um, yeah. And I just like immediately on watching that pilot, which I think probably is overall a little more comical and zany than the actual show uh just immediately it was like there is zany? so zany you would describe the many saints of Zur- newark as zany that's no that's that's what i was going to say was that oh. uh the many saints of newark is completely mirthless from beginning oh, to okay. end it's just <laughs> does it just suffer drag. from the like series reverence syndrome is what i'm calling it's, it now just, yeah like... yeah there's some real um I don't think my memory for Sopranos is like perfect by a long shot. And there were like constant moments for me, not remembering a whole lot from the show where it's like, Oh, I get the thing they're doing. Oh, I get it's like, (laughs) it's like solo the the star Wars movie. It's like, yes. Yeah. And uh, junior goes up to James Gandolfini's son. And it's like, you never had, you don't have the amazing makings of a varsity athlete. They, the, Please tell me they don't do that. <laughs> almost the entire movie is built around will Tony. Well, no, here's the thing. Tony's story is built around will Tony become a mafioso or will he continue to try to be a varsity athlete? They built the, <laughs> they built the entire story off of that. Oh um, and no. also, what the the movie was promoted as like i think the tagline is like literally who made tony soprano Mm -hmm. and the movie is not about tony (laughs) and actually michael gandolfini is really really good in it i Um, believe it but it's about dickie moltisanti right yeah considering who the movie is narrated narrated by (laughs) yes and there is a really wild for anyone thinking about watching many saints of newark who hasn't seen the sopranos there's a really wild spoiler at like 14 (laughs) seconds into many saints of newark it's really yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's Um, like the one of the few things i know about that movie it's like it's "Hmm, bold move (laughs) absolutely buck wild the choice um and then at the end of the movie it i it there's a beat that i actually thought was like kind of cute like it felt it felt like kind of one of the dreamier moments from the show and then suddenly it's a scene that focuses a little on tony and again the movie has completely failed to resolve the question of whether tony will be a mafioso or will (laughs) become a varsity athlete athlete. and all of a sudden (laughs) right at the last moment in the movie you hear that bass line and the theme song from the show <laughs> drops. And it, it was in that moment, I was like, no wonder people have a negative impression of this movie. It leaves you on just the wackest, shittiest note. Like playing the theme song from the show as the credits music was just awful. It's so bad. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it did that. Ooh. Oh, oof. So anyway. That's my I will, axe to grind I, I, today. I, I am interested to watch it. I will watch it after I finish the, the, the show, despite already knowing what those big fat spoilers are. Uh, I do really like the parts of the show where it does do flashbacks to that period. They're really, I do remember them being much better than this movie, yeah. <laughs> 
they're really great and like characterful and impactful whatever okay we're get, we're, we're just did, talking about the pilot yeah, we're not uh, did, I, I'm curious relatedly in another uh let's make a movie later thing did you guys see El Camino I did I, I did thought not. it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Like I I sort of feel like in the same way that like Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker couldn't be good movies because they kind of had the the debt from Force Awakens and it just kind of <laughs> damned the trilogy. Mm-hmm. That's didn't mean that that came out as a scorching hot take and I didn't mean for it to be. But um uh I, I have enough problems with the Breaking Bad finale that <laughs> that movie as a sequel to the Breaking Bad finale, I think it's just saddled with a couple of things that I just like so fundamentally don't work for me that such as jury, jury will you please talk about the norm Breaking Bad Twitter thing that you sent me because so, sidebar for the unfamiliar uh <laughs> I Norm Macdonald has been on and off my radar my entire life, having loved SNL as a kid and everything. Um, he 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 came back into my life having just said that I had issues with the Breaking Bad finale. I just adored him again because he did this Twitter thread where he insisted Breaking Bad was the greatest show of all time and that the finale was truly great because it was a dream sequence. It was. It was Walter White's dying dream uh, of he's still alone. Breaking Bad spoilers, right? Are we worried about that? No, go. No, nobody cares. Go. Um, it's it is Walt's dying dream, still alone in the cabin in Colorado, dying of cancer, because the finale was so fundamentally asinine and silly that there was no other possible way Norm Macdonald could allow himself to read the <laughs> events that occurred in it. Um, and I, and he like argued with people for days after it's posting so this theory. Fucking funny. <laughs> and it's, and it's like pointed, sharp, incisive, critically interesting analysis of the episode. Um, I, I think I'm, I actually coincidentally just randomly bought on YouTube and watched the Breaking Bad finale a couple weeks ago, having not seen it in a really long time. Mm-hmm. And it's it's frustrating because I think it's such excellent filmmaking, but I think yeah. it just like why did you do that? I I don't know. I don't have an answer for that question. <laughs> I so it all makes character sense, but I think Jesse murdering Todd just felt so bad to me. Like, I was just like, it's not something I'm happy to see happen. It's probably cathartic for him after everything that's happened. But I just don't understand why we want to see Jesse kill people. Do we mind El Camino spoilers? No, I don't care. He kills like two or three more people. Yeah, he kind of goes back and what? Like, takes motherfuckers down. And Doesn't... yeah, it's like, I I don't want to see Jesse kill people. Jesse doesn't want to kill people, does he? I, I was very puzzled by it. That said... I think Vince Gilligan is a really great filmmaker and I think it's a really watchable movie. I just think like on a character level, I was really bothered by it. That's an interesting take, Jory. I didn't mean to be too negative in your response after you said that you, you liked no, the no, movie. No, 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 no. But well, because I watched it having only seen Breaking Bad once all the way through and then uh, didn't remember a lot of Breaking Bad when I watched it. So actually I enjoyed it, but I was confused because I also forgot who most people were. So, <laughs> yeah that's really interesting D- jory and i have spoken about breaking bad very very extensively uh off of this pod but I- i've rewatched th- that's like maybe one of my most rewatched shows and not proportional to how much i like it in terms of general shows like i love mm-hmm. it but it's not like my favorite but i've rewatched it so many fucking times <laughs> i, I- just because there's a tear in my depression that's just like, yep, we're doing it again. Let's go. I have to say, I, I like Breaking Bad a lot. I've seen the entire show twice. Uh, once on tour. And uh, the thing that colors everything to me is I can picture how annoying it must be to hang out with Brian Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I watch the show, I'm like, oh, this, oh, no, it's, I don't know. Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's just one of those he's... people I watch on screen where I'm like, I don't need to hear about your craft, bro. 
Yeah, you know? I was going to say, do you think he's <laughs> self-important about it? or Look, I- I'm basing this on literally nothing except uh, wishful thinking, but... Uh, <laughs> The wish, the wish we all have of being yes. better than Brian Cranston. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, look, as a fellow Brian, right? We have to, we look out for each other, and when there's someone who needs to be put down, we we take that very seriously. Um, but it's, yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, it's, for it's, for it's, all the raving about Brian Cranston's acting in the show, it, and he's good in it, it just, I guess, I don't have the same awe for it that so many others do it's there's there's the level of i feel like people don't acknowledge or include in the discussion that breaking bad is just objectively a very very silly show it's yeah it's it's insane Yeah. yeah um and also like Walter White is one of the most hateable characters. He's the and, worst fucking person in the world. And I think Brian Cranston really sells him being just the most insufferable. Um, self-serving yeah. asshole, for sure. Yeah. I mean, even just like his mannerisms and everything, like you just, I, I, having rewatched the show many times, uh, I just loathe him, hate every second, any moment Anna Gunn is on screen. I'm just like, oh, thank God. Okay. Oof, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I also can't watch it without thinking about that time Dean Norris tweeted the word sex gifts. Sex gifts. <laughs> what? What, an, what an immortal moment. Wait. Wait. Have you not seen it? <laughs> no. It, D, Dean Norris, and this is maybe six, year, no, six or seven years ago, yeah. uh, just out of nowhere tweeted <laughs> sex gifts. No explanation. And, and doesn't delete it, doesn't acknowledge it. Has, <laughs> Truly, I and I mean all credit to Dean Norris. It, he wanted to see some sex gifts. He's a kind of an older guy, so he doesn't know what he's doing. Fair enough. So legit that that tweet is still online to this day. It's the funniest thing in the fucking world. Sex gifts. Sex gifts. <laughs> so every oh time Hank God. walks on screen, I'm like. <laughs> You ready for some sex gifts, buddy? That's how I felt. Um, because I think sex gifts happened after the finale. But when <laughs> yeah, I was watching Under so, the yeah. Dome, you better believe I could not stop thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, I think we were approaching the two-hour mark, so I think this is a good time to wrap well, up. Well, uh, <laughs> well, we this is kind was, of on topic at the end here. Eh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know, Sopranos. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll. I think the plan is to keep doing this. Uh, if I would I, love if, to. Yeah, I, I I think this is a great way to watch the show. This uh, is a great way for me to force my friends to hang out with me. <laughs> well, also that. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll put this up and see what people think. And hopefully we'll do it again real soon. But I, I, I think this could be our first uh, regular Patreon-only series. You're saying that like we don't have other regular series like the, the mini sodes well, or the cross well i mean like spe- that aren't the the usual mini sodes i mean like a specific patreon only thing that's not just the mini sodes right is this going on a higher tier no no that's why it's an nft yeah actually oh, wait, wait, wait. before we that. sign off before we sign off I, I have to find a tweet that's relevant um hold on Oh, I'm so glad you got a mechanical <laughs> keyboard so we can really get like the hacker insight into this. <laughs> it makes it really difficult to sneakily Google things. Um, <laughs> I use my phone. Okay, thank you. This is my favorite. This is my like the only good tweet. What, what are, you, are you? Oh, there it is. Sorry. It's in the chat. I know how to use that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. That, what a that perfectly douchey picture of him too. Uh, we're yeah. looking at a tweet from the uh, Multisanti Thoughts uh, Twitter account. Christopher Multisanti weighs in on current events. And it's a photo of Michael Imperioli uh, wearing <laughs> wearing a black leather jacket with a white Oxford shirt buttoned down underneath it, and wearing. I would compare them to Neo's sunglasses. Yeah, from they're, they're, they're slightly <laughs> larger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the text is, it's called a non-fuckable token. They're worth so much money because they're made of computers. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Oh man, it's um. I remember that 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 account popped up. It did that tweet that did numbers, and then the <laughs> shtick got old real quick. <laughs> yeah. I have a plugin that uh, brings up highlights from accounts I visit, and one of these, as I scroll down, is one that says. So it it's uh, him talking to Tony, and it says it's called Japanime. They put these teens in giant robots that feel pain and make them fight to the death. The teens are horny too. Sick shit. <laughs> I mean, honestly, wow, pretty apt. Yeah. All right. Well, this they're is... called non-fuckable tokens. Uh, <laughs> see y'all next time. Oh wait, wait. When we do, when, can we do the oh, little like um, HBO like sign off? Like, should we do it together? I feel like that would be the way to do it. Wait, are we doing the sound of like the CRT turning off? Yeah, I don't know if we can all do that. And you know, I was well, just saying that in post, we should put that in. Oh, okay. I think yes, we should. Put that I think we should. I think we should give it an honest try. I don't. I forget how it sounds. <laughs> All right, that was it. That's there it. it. Is. We, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>